Did I sign the petition saying that Game of Thrones should totally redo their final season? You bet your butt I did. <clears throat> it's related, trust me. Impeachment is happening. After months and months and months and months, it's four months, of hemming and hawing, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced in late September that she had blessed a formal impeachment inquiry to look into what President Donald Trump said and did in a July conversation with newly elected Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, among other alleged transgressions that Trump may or may not have committed during his first three years in office. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. So, here we are. Impeachment. But what does a formal impeachment inquiry actually look like? And who is in charge of inquiring? Well, it's all a little bit complicated. This is Congress after all. So impeachment inquiry is actually just an umbrella term for six separate but coordinated investigations being run out of a half dozen House committees. That's different than what some House Democrats were pushing Pelosi for, which was a single select committee that would handle all impeachment related investigations and questions. But Pelosi rejected that idea in favor of this six headed impeachment dragon. Sidebar, I've just given you an incredible Halloween costume if you're a giant nerd. You're welcome, and sidebar. Here are the six men and women who will be tasked with actually running this thing. Here we go. Jerry Nadler of New York, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Adam Schiff of California, who is the chair of the Intelligence Committee in the House. Elliot Engel of New York, chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Elijah Cummings of Maryland, chair of the Oversight Committee. Richard Neal of Massachusetts, who is the chair of Ways and Means, and last but certainly not least, Maxine Waters of California, who is the chair of the Financial Services Committee. That's the six. Now, as you might guess, these six people have all been around Washington for a long time. Neal and Engel were first elected in 1988. That was before I was even born. <clears throat> <clears throat> Waters came into Congress two years later, while Nadler was elected in 1992 and Cummings in 1996. Of the six-headed dragon, name idea, Drogon, that's really original by me, only Schiff was elected in the 2000s. And by that, I mean he was elected in the year 2000. So 19 years. Real newcomer to Congress. Now combine the sextet, boom, proper nomenclature, <laughs> have served in Congress for a combined 160 years because math. Which is roughly, by the way, how old the younger people I work with think I am. It's close. Now, you don't serve that long in Congress usually unless you represent a district that heavily favors your party. That's definitely true of the six-person impeachment team. Hillary Clinton carried five of their districts with somewhere between 74% and 78% of the vote in the 2016 election. Only in Neil's Western Massachusetts seat did Clinton dip below 70%. She still got 56% there and won over Trump by 20 points. So this group of six is, in short, congressional lifers who represent constituencies that are strongly supportive of impeaching this president. Which again, shouldn't surprise you, since Nancy Pelosi's entrusting them with a process that is very, very likely to end with Trump being only the third president to be impeached by the House in history. Shouts out to my guys Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton, I guess. So how exactly will these six committee chairs work together to make that outcome happen? Actually, it's sort of an open question at the moment and could wind up being a hurdle in the Democratic impeachment efforts. Why, you ask? Because every one of those six committee chairs see themselves as investigating a key piece and probably the key piece of the Trump impeachment question. Richard Neal, for example, has already begun the process of trying to force the administration to hand over Trump's tax returns. Elliot Engel? He's likely to point out that Trump's conduct with the Ukrainian president is the closest thing to a smoking gun Democrats have on Trump and should, therefore, take precedence. And Schiff, who has been perhaps the most high-profile Trump critic of the bunch, he's on table all the time, well, he's not likely to cede that ground easily or willingly. So Pelosi will try to ensure that egos don't get in the way here, which, well, good luck. But the way she hopes it will work is this. After conducting their separate, but not totally separate investigations into the various aspects of Trump's conduct in office, these six will come together to craft articles of impeachment against Trump. Now that, of course, assumes that the committees will find what they believe to be impeachable conduct in the course of their investigations. Now, the articles of impeachment they draft would then be voted on by Nadler's Judiciary Committee, which is where these sorts of matters usually, historically, wind up. 
And if those articles of impeachment are approved by a simple majority of the Judiciary Committee, which, not for nothing, has 24 Democrats and just 17 Republicans on it, they would then move to a full vote of the House. Now, if the House, again by a simple majority, approved of the articles, then Trump is impeached. But he's not thrown out of office. The whole thing then moves to the Senate, I told you it was complicated, where there is a trial then to determine whether Trump is guilty of the articles of impeachment approved by the House or not. Now, just because it moves to the Senate doesn't mean these key six House members would have no role to play in the trial, since the House does vote on so-called impeachment managers to make the case to the Senate, essentially the lawyers that will make the case to the Senate jury. After all of that, Trump would only be removed from office if two thirds of the Senate, where I'll remind you Republicans currently control 53 seats, vote in favor of convicting him. So math tells you that impeachment isn't a sure thing at all. But make no mistake, this six headed house impeachment dragon will play a major role in determining the fate of the future of Donald Trump's presidency. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.